All right, guys, happy new year. I'm going to talk to you today about some vision, some things that I believe God is going to be doing or, or wants to use us to do for the year 2021 in this church. Yesterday, I did a 2020 review. You can watch it. Incredible year. It's kind of a long video. It was uh, hard to, to even tell everything that happened in 2020 because it was so much of it and it was so... Honestly, it was really a good year for this church, a good year. Uh, I, I measure a good year, meaning in terms of did we effectively reach our community with God's love, and it was our best year ever by far without, not even close, okay? Um, did we see God at work doing miraculous things? Absolutely, more this year than, more in 2020 than we ever did. Okay, but 2021, what's in store here? Um, I've got a few things to share. And I, I want to start off by saying, uh, if, if we learn some lessons from 2020, one of them is that you don't always know what's coming next. And that any plans you've got and ideas you've got and ministries you have in mind, they say all oh, run this way. Uh, 2020 kind of wrecked all that and gave us opportunities to do entirely new things. So I'm going to lay out some vision for 2021, and it starts with the caveat if God wills it, if God allows it, if God continues to bless these things, this is the vision that I see. We saw we had to change a lot in 2020. Well, the core of 2020, though, was supposed to be consecrate. It's supposed to be set things apart, separate them unto the Lord, cut everything out, start all over, start afresh. That that, that this that was our vision meeting of, of January 2020, and I didn't think it would happen the way it did, and that wasn't even on the radar. I don't even know if I'd heard of COVID um, at that point. Like, it, well, I'm, I'm, it just wasn't there, or we didn't know about it. But it happened. It happened not the way I expected by any stretch, but that idea did happen. It was shut everything down, repent, and then rebuild, and only do the things, only pick the things back up that belong to Christ. So 2021, I can't promise you it's going to work this way or that way or that this won't work or whatever. But I know this much. I know this much, and it would be true any year, so it's a biblical standard, and it's strong on my heart. The word is stand up, stand firm, stand strong, stand, stand, stand in 2021. Stand. Just don't fall. I believe that the hardships of 2020 in various ways will continue into 2021. They might look different. There might be more of them. I believe there will be. Um <clears throat> 2021, in terms of what happens on the news, is going to have a lot of bad news in it, I believe. Okay? I, I did their year in review yesterday, and I don't think I even mentioned the election. Like, major stuff, right? But um, I don't, as, as it stands right now, I don't even know what to make of, of who's even going to be the next president for the next four years. Because, um, I mean, they say Biden won by the vote count, but they say the vote count's all wrong. So what do I know? I know nothing, but stand. I know that. And we're going to be studying the book of Ephesians um, this coming year. Now, we are right in the middle of our Roman series. I'm not going to stop that, but I am going to take a, a, a break from it. Sorry, I got stuff on my Bible. I'm going to be taking a break from Romans for the month of January. I almost always do in the month of January. I stop whatever we're in and just kind of talk about vision, talk about direction, where we were, where we're going, stuff like that. So January is going to be a short pause from Romans, but we will pick it up. And I will keep doing these every day at noon things through Romans. It'll be the Sundays that might be a little different. Anyway, beyond that, I I see us studying Ephesians. If God changes that, hey, praise the Lord, he's welcome to. Um, but this book of Ephesians is a wonderful little book. It's all about how to grow, how to stand, how to rise up, how to raise up, a church. That's what it's about. Okay. So we're going to be talking to the church about how to stand up. All right. There's, there's only two, I'll give you this little preview for, for Ephesians. There's only two quotes in Ephesians that quote from the old Testament. Kind of bizarre. If Paul wrote it, Paul's always quoting the old Testament, but to my knowledge, there's only two quotes in Ephesians that quote out of the old Testament. It's Ephesians four verse eight. It says, um, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives 
and gave gifts to men. Um, and then in chapter 5, it says, Awake, O sleeper, arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. All right, both of these are about rising up, okay? Awake, O sleeper, wake up, and arise from the dead. Uh, this is chapter 5, chapter 4. When he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and gave gifts to men. Christ ascended, and in chapter 4 and chapter 5, he tells you to arise, to stand up. Chapter 6 is your... Um, armor of God. What is the purpose of the armor of God? So that you will stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, putting on the armor of God. Stand firm. That's what it's about. It's about stand up. Chapter 2 talks about being built up as a church. Each person is like a stone in the wall of a building. Every stone has its own shape, and if everybody just uses their shape, their particular purpose for which God made you, and let him place you in that, in that wall, you will build up a beautiful, gigantic, huge church. It's when people start poking around and saying, I don't like where I'm at. I don't like these guys near me. I'm uncomfortable in here. If, if, imagine if all the stones in a stone house talked to each other like that. The house would fall down very quickly, right? I don't want to be here. I want to be over there. Those guys are nicer. I want to be, a, a, but you're shaped to fit in this, this hole, and God made you here. So to be built up together is one of the themes of the book of Ephesians, all right? It's also a lot of stuff in Ephesians about mystery, about things you do not know and can't understand and don't understand. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of that in there. So look, we know this much. We know God wants us to stand up and rise up and hold together, stand firm. He wants us to be have integrity, to not fall apart, to the, the stone wall to hold up. We know that about God, and we know that he wants that in us. But there's also things that we do not know. 2020 taught us that. 2021, I believe, will teach us more of that. There'll be things we don't know. But the things that we do know are enough. God wants us to stand. All right, so we're going to look. What does it mean to stand? What does it mean to stand firm? Stand firm indicates that uh, you need to stand firm, that there's going to be opposition. There's going to be wind blowing against it, a current running against it, that there's going to be shifting sand at your feet, and you're going to need to brace yourself and hold firm. That's what it indicates. That's what it implies. Okay, what's the purpose of building up a church with great integrity so it won't fall apart? Well, it one of the reasons is because it would far, fall apart when opposition came, unless it's held together the right way. So expect that. Like we said yesterday in the 2020 overview, the perspective makes a ton of difference. Do you expect hardship? If you expect it, then it doesn't throw you off your game when it comes. If you expect it, then you see it as an opportunity. Well, here's a neat opportunity to serve God in a new way. So 2021, stand firm no matter what comes. All right? Um, I, I believe, I, I want to say I believe it makes it sound like somebody might not believe this, but I think everybody in the world is, would agree with this. The world that in which we live is falling apart. Well, if Christianity is held together by Christ then we ought to stand firm. We ought to stand apart. We ought to look different. We ought to act different. So stand firm means it's kind of stand apart, stand differently, be uniquely Christian in the way we operate and interact with one another um, and in the, the influence that we have in the world. It should, we shouldn't be influenced by them. We should be influencing them. Okay, Stand up, stand firm, be there. Don't close. Don't fall down. I don't believe in closing the church. We had some goofy experiments back in late in late March last year, 2020, and uh, we're done with that stuff, okay? By the grace of God, we're done with that. I think a church needs to stand firm, and a part of being stand firm is meaning being here and open and available. All right, if I get COVID and die, I, I surely hope that the next leader that God raises up in this church will continue that. Um, if I catch COVID and miss a couple weeks, we'll have substitute preachers. If I catch it early in the morning on a Sunday, I might call you and ask you to jump in. Stand up, rise up, awaken from sleep, and get on it. We're all going to need to do this. But let's think outside the church. That's going to be the one of the main themes for this year. Stand up. Stand up in places that need a Christian standing in them. We don't need Christians in church. Church is full of them. Right? I mean, don't get me wrong. We need Christians in church. The more the better, right? I, I wish everybody were a Christian in church. But uh, it's the places that aren't church that Christians need to be all the more. Your township board of supervisors, your uh, school boards, 
um, your community centers, the hospitals, those kinds of places. They need Christians. Find a place that needs a Christian and then go stand there. That's the theme for 2021. Stand up. Stand up in a place that needs you to stand up. Because they're all going to get ideas. They're all following something. Every decision maker, every organization, every network has people in it with voices, making their voices heard. If Christians aren't there standing up, just means other people are. Doesn't mean that, you know, they'll, they'll call us and beg us to show up. The public school did. They came to, to us. So me and Trish Geist, the, the pastor up the hill at the Methodist Church, worked together, partner up. We told them that we would be happy to uh, if they ever needed help. And they came to us and asked for help. So that will happen at times, but most of the time it won't. And even though they asked us for help, ultimately it's on us to make it happen. Um, <clears throat> we could have said no, or we could just do a sloppy job. We're doing our best to help the, the public school kids. All right. Um, stand up, find a place that needs a Christian standing there, and then be the Christian standing there. Okay. Invite some neighbors over and get to know them. Ask how you can pray for them. Go to a business that's being threatened with shutdown notices or some nonsense um, and, and, and be there and stand there and support them and be a blessing to them and tip your waitress, your server, whatever, and uh, ask how you can pray for them. We've started doing this at Rosie's and at Apple Bin uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. We're praying for, for our server. We're tipping them. They're open. They're nice. We're nice to them. A lady this morning asked uh, which church we're part of and was wondering how to, how to get here and stuff. I don't know if she's going to come to church. I mean, that would be great. It's not necessarily the point. The point is to be a Christian witness wherever we go and to specifically go to places that need Christian witnesses, that need support, that need prayer. Be a Christian. Go somewhere that needs a Christian and stand there. Stand up. It's time to awaken from sleep. Arise, O sleeper. All right? That's going to be the theme. Some areas that we're going to promote heavily is they call them the millennial generation, the 20-somethings. I look around the church here. We have a lot of little kids in the single digits. We have a lot of teenagers in the double digits. We have a lot of young families, 30-somethings with kids, 40-somethings, 50-somethings, 60-somethings, 70 into the 80s. We've got them. We don't have too many in the 20s. All right. Now, I look around a church and I'm, I see parents who have kids in their 20s, a lot of them, and the kids aren't in church. Some of them are at other churches, which is perfectly fine. I'm glad. As long as they're gospel churches and I, all of them I'm aware of are. Um, but others just aren't. So our church has within its network of families a lot of 20-somethings. But in its actual church ministries, it has very few. Um <clears throat> That's gonna. We we need Christians standing up in the twenty something category, age basically age nineteen through through twenty nine or so. We need Christians to stand up there. So that's something we're gonna push this year. I tried to push it in twenty twenty, just didn't really get traction. It's gonna. It's just because we're pushing it doesn't make it easy. Okay, so we're gonna try again. We're gonna try harder. We're gonna try new things in twenty twenty one. Other areas that need Christians standing up are the school boards around here. They need help. And they need Christian help because they're being influenced in a lot of directions. And if Christians aren't doing it, it just means others are. Uh, the, the townships and the boroughs need Christian influence on their councils and their supervisors and stuff. The hospitals do. The, the government does. Okay, We're going to try to be more active with our congressional and Senate and these sorts of people. Um, <clears throat> stand up. Stand up. Be salt for the community. Be light for the world. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to trust God that, that by doing that, he will be glorified and that good, powerful, effective things will happen. Uh, the poor, we're going to continue our food ministry every Saturday, our miraculous power of God. God provides every Saturday. We're going to continue that, our food ministry drive through, and we're going to keep praying for everybody. And I believe we're going to see more cancer healings and more other healings and whatever. We're going to keep pushing that. And... We're going to ask God, what else can we stand up for? And we're going to see what opportunities he gives us. All right. Praise the Lord. Stand up. How do you stand up? Start the year with fasting and prayer. I don't care if it's New Year's Day or if you have a big family get-together New Year's Day. I do. Um, 
I'll eat there because I want to eat with my family and do that, and it's planned. So I'm going to start my fast the day after New Year's, January 2nd. Um, I don't care when you do it, but do it in within the first week for sure. Take a whole day and don't eat anything and don't drink anything but water. Don't drink. It don't have any calories. Okay, if you drink like coffee, black coffee, I don't think that has any calories. I sometimes drink coffee when I'm fasting. Um, anyhow, eat nothing. And every time you're hungry, pray, God, help me love you more than food. Help me be hungrier for your righteousness than for food. Help me to be more satisfied by you than with food. Help me to love you more than food. Teach me what you have to teach me. And then pray over certain things that you have in your life and carry on. And see what every time you're hungry, which will be a hundred times, a thousand times in that first day, do it. If you can, if you even mildly, like, I think it's theoretically, hypothetically possible, fast for a full week, seven days straight, don't eat anything. You can do it. Uh, I would say, I, I'm, not, I'm no doctor. If you have some health concern, you don't listen to me. But if you're a healthy adult person, you can absolutely fast straight up for a week without any calories, only water. You can absolutely do it if you're a healthy adult person, okay? If you want to argue medically with me, hey, maybe you know something I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but chances are you can fast, and most of the time it's fear or excuses um, or just the temptation of food itself that leads you away from it. So hit the ground running in 2021 by prayer and fasting. Make a daily habit every day of the year of Bible reading and prayer. If you're married, pray with your spouse every day, no matter what. Jesus says that where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in my in their midst. So if you want Jesus in your midst, do you? I assume you do. I hope you do. He literally says he's there in your midst if you pray with your wife or your husband. Two or three, that's two of you praying in his name. He's there. Do you want Jesus in your life? Could you use some Jesus in your marriage? Then pray. Pretty simple. Every day. Okay, if you're not married, maybe you have kids but you're not married, pray with your kids every single day. Have them pray also. Get them to do it, and you do it every day, okay? If you're single, if you live alone, whatever, pray by yourself. Make it a habit every day. I'm going to pray, okay? If, if you're single and you, you can do this, and I, I would recommend it, find somebody you can call every day and pray. It doesn't even have to be the same person each day. Just call somebody to pray. Jesus is going to be there in your midst. Where can you go wrong, right? Do it. Pray every day. Read your Bible every day. Fast the first week of the year. Or at least the first day. Come on, at least the first day. But I would challenge you for the first week. Straight up fast. Um, <clears throat> and then go find a place that needs a Christian and stand there being a Christian. Do that. Stand up this year. That's how we're going to get it done. Praise the Lord. Uh, God bless you. And uh, we'll continue this series. I'm trying to post them right, on, on, right at noon. God bless.